go to yeah. anybody up here. In the yeah, guys. congrats to Utah State. Obviously, you know, won their league. Um, you know, very good basketball team. Obviously, that conference had a great year. Um, today was just our day. And I thought some things after we kind of got settled into the game and then we, we were able to establish Zach at the rim, I just felt like that was too much for him. And then we balanced some things out, obviously. Made some shots from the perimeter. Um, two things that really stood out to me, obviously Zach got established there, but I thought Trey Kaufman's ability to rebound the basketball and be a part of the game was big. Then I thought Lance Jones's ability to defend Brown and really give a lot of energy and effort to picking the basketball up and just trying to make it hard on him. Brown's a really good player. And um, he reminds me of Mike Green, who played at Butler, was a really good player at Butler and was a good professional player overseas. Um, just the way he carries himself, you know, big shoulders, can make plays, can make shots. You kind of saw that dose of it late in the game when he made those two tough pull-up threes at the end. Like he's he kind of had superpowers for him here the past six, seven weeks in terms of the plays he made it into games. But I thought Lance's defense and Trey and um, – but just a good team effort. Like the guys that came off the bench, Miles Colvin, Cam Heidi, um, you know, all those guys. I thought they did a really, really good job. I thought Fletch was really good. Um, you look at his line, 15 points, six assists, uh, zero turnovers. Um, you know, pretty efficient. I want to leave anybody out. But, you know, Braden obviously didn't get going in terms of scoring the basketball, got those two fouls. And that was a big step for us right there. When Braden went out of the game, we extended that lead. And uh, that's having a deep team. And I thought Lance Jones was solid. Um, at times, you know, for him, you know, he, he likes to hit triples and homers and just, you know, being steady and hitting those singles and being solid. And I thought he was tonight. I thought he gave a great effort. But across the board, just pleased with our guys. And, you know, anytime you can out-rebound somebody by 23 and then your turnovers are even, you know, you're going to be in a pretty good position, especially if you're getting to the free throw line more than them. Start right here. Matt, Steve Stroman, Eric, so eight sports. Let's go, back to, let's go back to Lance. You were talking about how huge that was when Braden got his two, two fouls. You guys expanded the lead. Hit, hit Trey inside, and he just kind of dominated the first half of that game. Talk a little bit about again about Lance Jones and how important he is. Yeah, I, I thought just, you know, anytime you can have that combo guard um, that can play both positions and can guard both positions, and then you have a quintessential point like Braden, you know, now you have the luxury of something does go wrong. You know, you have that other guy to be solid and to run your team, but also be able to, to defend. And uh, we put Lance on points. We put him on twos. Um, at times, we'll put him on a three. It just kind of depends on matchups. But uh, he, he's been great for us. I think it's been a little bit different for him because he's always played through his offense. And there's games that with our team and the weapons that we have that you're not always going to get a high volume of shots. Um, you might shoot the ball eight to ten times for a couple games, and you might only shoot the ball four to five times. That's, that's kind of hard for him, just getting him to that point to where he can turn some of those you know, possessions down, and let Zach get settled, and then let them deal with it. You know, I always tell him that you know, if, if you just, just wait for him, let him set a ball screen, let him get into the post, and just keep things simple, uh, things will really open up for him even more. Yes, it was really hard. Yeah, yeah. We had two or three bad shots a game for about twenty-five games. So I'm just told, I told Zach just to go rebound. So, but that's you know it's hard like to play a certain way your whole life, and then like you come and you're not, you know, you're not first fiddle, you're not second fiddle. Like it, that's okay. There's a lot of people making a lot of money professional basketball that are fourth and fifth fiddles that accept that role, and he's really accepted that role. But his his effort today defensively. You know, just uh, th that was great. Right. Uh, Kyle, Sports Report Media, talk about the unselfishness of your team and how much a sacrifice all these guys make, not just today in this tournament, but all season. Yeah, when you pass the basketball, and like sometimes we will overdo some things. Like just when you share the basketball and pass the basketball and don't have pre predetermined thoughts and just take what the defense gives you. So like talk to Zach about it, you know, today before the game. I said, if they crowd you and they don't let you dribble, we just got to shoot open shots. That means you don't get a post move then. You know, just if they want to take it away like that, just do it. But if they don't, you know, that's his rule. It's always been his rule. When he's one-on-one, -on -one, he scores. 
And it starts there. It starts with Braden because they dominate the ball a lot for us. But when they start taking Braden and Zach away, that's when a lot of things open up or they overdo some things. And uh, whether that's ball screen action or dribble handoff or playing through the post. Um, but, you know, when your best players are unselfish, it's contagious. You know, guys get in line. Jerry. Hi, Jerry Palm, CBS Sports. Hey, Matt. Um, it's, it's unusual to see teams play two posts. Like, you guys start two posts every game. And Trey had a tremendous night tonight. Um, both guys obviously played well. Was there something that you saw when you scouted Utah State that led you to believe that both of these guys could have big nights? Um, not really. You know, I, I think it can present itself. It depends on how much attention. You know, if you go in double or you mess with it and, and Zach misses it or you overdo it, you should be in pretty good rebounding position. And so I thought Trey was really good in the first game in the second half. I thought in the first half of, uh, you know, the first round game, he was getting his hands on a lot of balls, but he wasn't grabbing them with two hands. Then the second half he was. And today I think he just established himself and got that confidence. And, and that's what we need from him. Even when things don't go his way, he's just got to stay with it and keep battling. Um, because when you have someone like Zach that gets that kind of attention and Braden gets that kind of attention, like now if you stick a couple shooters in there, you know, you're going to get some open looks, and then Trey can get his post-ups or Trey can get the ball off the glass. Questions for the student-athletes as well, right here. Yeah, uh, Zach, um, oh, Ty Golden with CNHI. Zach, I know you have a lot of belief in your teammates, but when Braden came off the floor, the run, you know, it, you, I think all but two points of that run were scored with him off the floor. What kind of emotional lift was that, and how did you kind of, you and, and Trey can address this as well, how did you kind of feed off of that? Zach? I think it just kind of proves to the country what I've already believed. Um, we're, a, we're a really deep team. Like, someone goes out, it's like, I went out, we were good. Brady went out, we were good. Like, we got a lot of guys that can go and a lot of guys that can, like, sustain um, a high level of play. Trey? Just what, just what Zach said. Um, I really don't have anything to add to that. I mean, we're, we're a deep team. Um, we know that whoever we put out on the floor, we're confident that they can make plays and, you know, help us win. Right. And back here, yes. Uh, Vince Lembo with the Purdue Exponent. Coach, uh, this was 106 points was Purdue's highest ever point total in a March Madness game, also tied for the highest uh, margin of victory. Do you think that speaks more to your offense, your defense? Does that mean anything to you? I, I think more than anything, our, our defense. I thought we were really good defensively after we kind of got through um, the first seven or eight minutes um, to Coach Sprinkles you know, offensive plan that they did something to start the game that they hadn't done before, or in all the tape that we watched, we didn't see it. And uh, they won a four or five ball screen, five, four ball screens. And they, they'd set the inverted ball screen for their big a lot this year. And so we worked on that, trying to help that. And I thought they did a good job there, but that caused us a little bit of problems. And then when we settled in, we really didn't want to foul. So we wanted them to score over us, but we wanted to mess with the dribble. So we wanted to make those things, you know, you know, difficult for them. And we just wanted to stay with Brown and really make it hard on Brown and then not let their shooters get going. Obviously, Martinez played well. We were familiar with him in Maryland. We knew that he could score the ball and shoot it. And, uh, you know, he really got off. But I, I think our defense really set the tone now. Because when we, we do that, we're, we're a good offensive rebounding team. But that defense can lead to some transition baskets. And as you get in the tournament and you play quality people, you got to be able to steal points somewhere. You can't just play in the half court. And I know we stopped them a lot there in the second half. But we, you know, we, we just felt offensively, if we could run our half court stuff and keep working on that, um, you know, that we had a place to go with the basketball. Right. Um, Greg Braggs, Boilers in the stands. Matt. Uh, Zach finishes with 54 points and 35 rebounds in two games here in Indianapolis. You see people, you know, around the country, even, you know, fans, but even pe people that cover the game say he's just tall. What would you say to the people that say that, that are only looking yeah. at the size and not just the game? Yeah, they, they just shouldn't cover basketball. Yeah, you know, and so like you go to school and, and you learn things or whatever, but we all don't like every single class we're in, right? It's kind of a necessary evil. It's like going to work. Like you don't like everybody you work with or you don't like certain parts of your job. And you know, it's tough, right? You, you gotta be able to deal with like certain things that, that are difficult. And so I just think everybody should like take tests on their knowledge of what they're doing. Like I think all coaches should take a test so they understand refereeing. And I think all referees should take a test so they understand coaching. And I think all journalists should have to take a basketball quiz or a test or anybody that tweets 
They should have to be able to do it. And if they say something so moronic as that, then they should have to have a probationary status where they, they can't tweet for like three months. I think it'll help like, like society, you know, like just try to knock out the fools, you know, so they don't have to, you know, meet at the local Walmart and say things that don't make any sense. With the Matt Bed Baby with ESPN. If it makes you feel better, we get pop quizzes. They're called layoffs. So um, Zach actually became the uh, the first player since Kareem uh, to have Holmy Reed or at Cornell Stats Department to have 50 points, 35 rebounds, and 65% uh, percent shooting through the first two games. How good has he felt? Uh, how good has he looked and how good has he performed uh, through these first couple games? Well, he's just performed like he has, you know, here the last couple years. You know, three years ago, he was a good player for us. You know, he caused problems, he did things, but it wasn't where he is now. He's just continued to get better. And, um, you know, we, we expect it. Like, we go into games and, like, our staff always looks at me and says, like, what do we need to do? So, well, Zach needs to get 20 rebounds. And everybody always laughs at that. I mean, but you're not asking somebody to do something he can't, he can't do. He can do that. And, um, you know, just, just get him to be, cons you know, be consistent and explain where you think the double's coming from and then explain some of the action. They're going to attack him. You know, everybody is going to attack him because they want him out of the game. So just getting him on that it has nothing to do with numbers. He has great knowledge of the game, and he understands the game, but he also doesn't have a wall. Most players have a wall to where do, are they really listening 100% to what you're saying. You know, he didn't have all that shit from recruitment. So, like, he just stops, and Coach Brantley talks to him in film. I talk to him about certain things. You know, P.J. talks to him about offense, Coach Johnson, Coach Lusk. He just takes it in. There's, there's not a pushback, but we also want to collaborate and we want to talk. And so, like, you know, let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you think here. And sometimes, you know, I'm wrong. Sometimes he's wrong. Sometimes, but the film doesn't lie, right? And so we just try to work through it and just keep growing and keep getting better. But, no, he's great. He's, he's, he's easy to coach. He's obviously got some great physical skills, but he's, he's, he's pretty intelligent. Mike? Zach, Mike DeCourcy from Sporting News. You were up 31 when you came out with 12, and 12 minutes and change. Um, at that point, did you think you were going to get back into the game, and did you at all lobby coach to try to get back in as the lead kept going up and up? I think his job is to coach and make those decisions. Um, uh, like, whatever he wants to do. If he wants to leave me in for the rest of the game, I would have stayed in for the rest of the game. If he wanted to take me out and leave me out, um, that's how it was going to be. I think it's, it's his job to make that decision. It's my job to play basketball. Right here. Uh, Travis Miller with uh, Boiler Upload. Uh, Zach and Trey, you guys obviously very familiar with Gonzaga in the next round. Play them each of the last two seasons. How much is that familiarity going to help you prepare for them this week, especially since it's only been a couple of months since you saw them on the court with this exact same team? Trey, start with you. No, it helps, <coughs> but, you know, they're a different team now. Um, you know, when you go throughout the season, um, you get better, you get more connected as a unit, um, you get better defensively, you get better offensively. So um, while they have the same personnel, it is, it's, you know, they're just better together. Zach? Yeah, I think they're a different team. We're a different team. We're going to approach it like it's a new game. We've only got time for a couple more, so right here. Zach, uh, you know, a year ago around this time or, you know, a month later, you decided to run it back. You know, now that you're here at this moment, getting to the Sweet 16, you know, is there any level of satisfaction? What are your feelings right now getting to this point and getting to the next round next weekend? It's no satisfaction. Uh, I don't think anybody on this team, um, like I didn't come back to make the Sweet 16. Um, I came back to make a run, like a deep run. Um, nobody's satisfied with where we are now. Everybody wants to keep pushing, and we're going to keep taking care of our bodies, keep uh, executing, focus on this game plan, and prepare for Gonzaga. Right over here. Zach, Kyle Nedrimp with the Indianapolis Star. I think Trey had eight points and three rebounds in the first five minutes of the game. Um, can you kind of describe what that meant for the, the impact that he had early, and then maybe his improvement also you've seen as a teammate over the last year or so? Um, I mean, it was huge. It gave us a huge boost. They were hitting some tough shots. He got to kind of answer with those two and ones in a row. Um, like he, he really got us going and um, provided that offense at the start. Uh, it just kind of shows like this is like this isn't like an outlier for him. Like this is who, what he can do. This is who he is. Uh, we all believe in him and we all trust him to have games like this every time he steps on the floor. Last question. Mark Monteith, IBJ. Trey, what has it been like for you 
with this team, you know, you have not had a starring role throughout the season. You're usually the first guy subbed out. Some games you only get a couple shots up. How difficult of an adjustment has that been for you, and what have you done to be able to make that adjustment? Um, I don't think it was too difficult. I mean, I was looking at, uh, like, last year um, at this time, like, we had such a good team, you know, and where was I going to find a role to help this team win? And that's what I thought about, like, a lot during the offseason, how I can just help the team win and improve. You know, I'm just lucky to – you know, we had such a good team last year that I even found the role on this team. So I'm just appreciative of that. And, um, you know, the guys believe in me, coach believed in me, and um, for the success we've had so far. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Matt. Thank, Thank you. you. Pass it. Pass it.